Hi guys, welcome back to Sam Talks Cars. I'm Sam Busby and I'm a freelance automotive journalist and I started Sam Talks Cars in July of 2019 and so far I've been read over eight and a half thousand times worldwide. I've loved cars all of my life and I'm most passionate about supercars and high performance marks. To put it bluntly, I'm a big nosed bearded idiot who likes to write about cars and I've been fortunate enough to own a few special ones myself. This week, in my second part of the weekly podcast, I'm talking about why the Audi B5 RS4 is the forgotten hero of the millennium. So let's begin. If you cast your mind back to 2000, which was a little tricky for me, I was only five years old and most likely only conquering the potty. However, Audi's first Rennsport model, the Porsche co-designed RS2, was now over the hill. Was it just a flash in the pan? Oh no, Audi were just getting started. Audi had started with a pretty good recipe in the RS2, with a 2.2 litre 5 cylinder. However, their new base from the S4 was graced with 6 cylinders, 2 turbos and 261 brake horsepower, which for 1999 and a mid-size estate car was something short of lunacy. However, this was just the base for what was going to become one of the most tuned and iconic engines Audi has ever produced. Quattro GmbH, Audi's then junior performance division, set to work enlisting British tuners Cosworth to develop the already good S4 engine into something truly remarkable. And boy, did they deliver. The V6 engine returned now with 375 brake horsepower and 440 newton meters of torque. The gift of twin KO4 turbos meant plenty more could be had with some very minor tweaks. This was a cult car from the very start. However, they were absolute pigs to work on, with even the most routine jobs involving an engine drop at great expense, and the cars were somewhat delicate from the very beginning, with exhaust cams wearing for unknown reasons at random mileages. However, upgrades from Loba were often used by owners. The bodywork got some tweaks too. Bold, blistered arches made the car look wide, mean and aggressive, with a purposeful stance, a little bit like a bouncer just waiting for you to put a foot wrong in a nightclub. Add this to the wide 18-inch brakes, beefy 360mm front brakes and the oval exhaust at the rear, you knew you were looking at something very, very special. The UK market was very small for the B5 RS4, with little over 500 units making their way across from Germany, all of which were obviously pre-ordered and sold the second their tyres had touched the tarmac. So what do they like to drive? Well, my car was not a standard example. It was modified by QS Tuning, who installed Miltec downpipes, a matching cap back exhaust, Porsche four pot rear brakes at 330mm, and 380mm Porsche four pot brakes. However, I did upgrade the fronts to the latest B7 RS4 eight pistons, and again, 380mm brake discs. When you add this to their stage three map, power was circa 460 brake horsepower and around 630 newton meters. The car was typical of its era, very raw and unforgiving in its delivery. You plant your foot, wait for both turbos to spool before a violent surge hits you, and the car lurches forward in what can only be described in an unpleasant fashion. The handling wasn't the most confidence-inspiring, despite its Bilstein, Bil, uh, Bilstein B12 setup all round, and you often found bumps like a kick directly to your spine. This car was hard and raw, and it made no apologies for it. But once you hit boost, just none of it mattered. It surges so aggressively with a symphony of V6 echoing through the cabin. You row through the gears and it just pulls and pulls and pulls. You honestly forget the car is 20 years old. Or at least the way it behaves in a straight line. My car was fitted with the Recaro pole position buckets as I had always wanted to recreate Audi's press car, known as Homer. This had the club sport package. This gave owners the option to spec pole position bucket seats, an Alcantara steering wheel and gear knob, stiffer suspension, a different exhaust setup and drilled brake discs all round. I'm an honest man and I think it's fair to say a lot of the B5's charm was lost on me. I was too young to appreciate its character and I always found myself longing to be back in a B7. Although I will admit the B5 has a simply iconic stance like the whale tail on an Escort Cosworth or a Sierra Cosworth. It's one of those cars you stand back and admire and you'll always be pleased to see at a show. I must admit I bought the B5 for the wrong reasons. I loved how they looked stanced at a lot of German car shows, but apart from that, I knew very little about them, so I just didn't fall in love with it the way I had with the B7. I put some great parts into a very cool car. 
my favourites being the Period Correct Sportec wheels and the Recaro pole position buckets. Would I have another B5? Yes, I would. But would I daily drive it? Absolutely not. Parts are becoming harder and harder to source, and even the most basic maintenance items are becoming a nightmare for owners. They will soon all be relegated to collections or the odd weekend blast in June. It's a grave shame there weren't more B5 sold in the UK. People deserve to see them, and hopefully Audi UK Heritage will start to produce the parts again so that these legendary cars will see the road just that bit more often. My car is now in the hands of another young man, um, and it's taken some more performance parts. It's now sitting on an air ride suspension setup, some Esperi wheels, and it's got some beautiful standard leather bucket seats in. The car looked fantastic. I saw it, I think, in September of last year, and it just looked exquisite. Not enough for me to want to own one again, but I'm, I'm very pleased that the car's getting the love it deserves. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for listening. You can check out my automotive blog on the link below and let me know your thoughts. Alternatively, you can follow Sam Talks Cars on Facebook or Instagram. Please remember to like and subscribe and leave me a comment down below with your thoughts. I'd love to know what you guys think. Cheers, guys.